The college football world got turned upside down this past week with the announcement that head coach Lincoln Riley will now be heading to USC and Brian Kelly is now taking a job at LSU. To put this into context, we have our very own Dan Wilkin to break it all down. And in your recent op-ed on Brian Kelly's move to LSU, you said this, Kelly's bailed on one of six teams that still had a chance to win the national title. That's not just the action of a broken man, that's the product of a broken sport. My question for you is what is broken right now in college football? Well, there's really no other sport where you have a situation like this. Uh, and some of it is just contractual. In the NFL, you know, Bill Belichick cannot go talk to the Tampa Bay Bucks or the Indianapolis Colts about a head coaching job when he's getting ready for the Super Bowl. Uh, that's not going to happen. That would basically, it's not allowed. So, College is different, and, and obviously when teams fire coaches and now with the early recruiting period, they're trying to get people hired as, as fast as possible. But the idea that a coach would leave a job while his team is still in the mix for the college football playoff, could still win a national championship theoretically. I mean, obviously Notre Dame is not favored to do that. But just giving up on it and telling the team, hey, you guys are on your own, here that is uh it's a look it says a lot about brian kelly's character i think but the fact that it's even possible shows a serious flaw that i think we need to be addressing even more in the future because the playoff is probably going to go to 12 teams that means about 20 teams are going to be in the mix going into the final couple weeks and you're going to have more situations like this potentially in the future and I just think it's a bad look for the entire sport if we're saying that the playoff matters so little or potentially making the playoff matters so little that a coach would just leave before that is even decided. It's it's really, really a bad look for college football. And we all saw the, the breakup text Coach Brian Kelly sent to his Notre Dame players. What do you think his reputation is aside from those inside the LSU bubble right now? Oh, it's definitely taken a hit. There's no doubt about it. And certainly there's no great way to leave a coaching job. I mean, we've seen over and over, it can be awkward, it can be contentious, uh, but it can also be done well. It can also be done in a way that doesn't necessarily leave a lot of hard feelings. It can be done more transparently. And I just think you kind of do the breakup by text thing when you've recruited those kids to Notre Dame, they came to play for you and all they really get is a text well after the news had already kind of leaked out publicly. And then mm -hmm. seven o'clock meeting in the morning that lasted from all accounts of less than about four minutes. It's just not what you want. And I don't think it says a lot about Brian Kelly and his ability to, just emotionally connect and cope with the situation. He should have done a whole lot better. And it, he had another bad deal when he left Cincinnati to go to Notre Dame, uh, where he kind of bailed on meeting with the team. So maybe it's just kind of who he is. And that's unfortunate. Well, you were critical of Brian Kelly. You did give Lincoln Riley some praise for his move to USC. And you wrote, we all know the pay is great in the SEC, as is the upside of recruiting in the most talent-rich area of the country. But for the coaches who will be in that league when Texas and Oklahoma join, let's face it, most aspects of the job will be bad. Would Lincoln Riley still be the coach at OU if they weren't moving to the SEC? Yeah, we'll, we'll never really probably get a great answer for that. But my sense is that that probably he would be. Um, Oklahoma in the Big 12 had the best setup possible. They were the best program for decades and decades. And all you have to do in the Big 12 if you're Oklahoma is be better than Texas and be better than Baylor and Oklahoma State. And they've proven very capable of doing that. But when you're in the SEC – it's a lot harder. The, the Oklahoma job has gone from being the best program in the league to being, I don't know, you know, sixth, seventh. Um, it's hard to really place them. I mean, certainly, I think Oklahoma can be a great program in the SEC, but it is going to take time. There is going to be an adjustment period, and, and there's no guarantees. As we head into the conference championship weekend, we've got a lot of new faces vying for the top four, and 
Let's be honest, we didn't really see Michigan actually knocking off Ohio State, but here's what you wrote after the game. After a steady diet of Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma, and Notre Dame in some combination, all of them dominating their respective conferences in recent years, it's not only a refreshing change, it's what sports are supposed to be. So like I said, we got a bunch of new teams vying for the uh, college football playoff, including a G5 program. So why is that a good thing for the game? Well, I think any sport, to thrive, you have to have people across the spectrum invested in the idea that their team's got a chance, that this thing is not a setup, that this thing is a real competition, and that if you do the right things, make the right coaching hires, recruit the right players, that you're going to have a chance to win too. The form holds and the favorites win on uh, Saturday. We're going to have a playoff with Georgia, who's only been to the playoff once before, mm -hmm. and Michigan, who's never been, and Cincinnati, who's never been, and Oklahoma State, who's never been. So I think that's good. I think that keeps people uh, motivated, interested. I think it will draw some fans in who just kind of got bored with the whole thing. So that I think the fresh blood really uh, livens it up a bit. Hey, sports fans, if you want to watch more sports seriously, be sure to check out these clips right here. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all the great content from us here at USA Today Sports.